In this video, I'm going to take a look at how we can navigate through a Python list using the while loop. Let's consider the following specification. Write a segment of code that will display the content of a Python list one element at a time. Assume the list has the size and content as suggested by the following schematic diagram. Here we can see the representation of a list schematically, and we can see that it has 10 elements, and these are the contents of those elements. We can see that the index goes from 0 through to 9, whereas this position is the 10th element in the list, and it's got the value of 9 as the index, because we have to remember we always start at 0. And here we can see we have the name of the list. To create the list shown in the schematic diagram, we can use this line of code here. And you can see that I choose the name list underscore A, which reflects this name here. And then you can see I assign this lot, and you can see we have the square brackets. And if you look at the content here, you can see that I have typed in all of the contents of the list as it appears here. For example, you can see that 23 is here in the list, and this 7 is the last element, as you can see here. Of course, Another program statement is capable of producing this list, and I'm showing that here. And you can see I'm ensuring that I do the object-orientated approach, because here I've got the same name of the list. I'm assigning this slot, and you can see in the square brackets here, I have the same content as I had here in this program statement. But here you can see I've got two brackets, and these brackets are there because this overall is a constructor, and it is a constructor that creates an instance of the list class. So you can use either of these two lines of code to produce this list. And the programs I'm going to show you in the remainder of this video will either show you this one or this one here. Let's consider this computer program. And the first line here you can see is going to be responsible for producing the list we've discussed so far in this video. And then you can see you've got 10 print statements and these print statements will be responsible for printing the output of one of the elements of the list this one for example will go to list a at this position the index position zero and will print out the value and of course that will be 23 if i come to the last one well that's going to go to the same list but on this occasion it's going to print what's stored in this element position which is the 10th element position and of course the 10th element position will have the the index of 9 so this statement will print out the 7 and if we look at the runtime for this computer program what we're going to see is this and if you have a look you should recognize that as the content of the list that we've looked at so far in this video let's consider this computer program and if you look to the first line you can see I'm constructing the same list but I'm using the constructor method in this case because I'm creating an instance of the list class and here you can see I've got two print statements this print statement is printing the first element in the list ie the list with the index of zero and this one is printing the tenth element of the list ie the one with the index of nine so when this program executes we're going to see 23 output and seven output so here we can observe the output and you can see indeed we have 23 and seven let's now consider this computer program and if we look at the first three lines we can see that they are identical to this program here what's different is this line here now what I would like to show you is that when this executes we're going to get an error and the reason we're going to get an error is we're trying to print what's in list a at the element position 10 which is the 11th element in the list but if you come up here and look at the list there are only 10 elements so in other words there is no element with this index of 10. Consequently, when this program runs, what we're going to see is this. And you can see that this line has printed out the 23. This line here has printed out the 7, as you would expect. And when we've come to execute this line, this error appears. And if we come down here, you can see that it's telling us we have an index error. And it goes on to say, list index out of range, which is precisely what's happened. You see this 10 is not within the range of this list. 
because this list goes from index position 0 to index position 9. So asking you to print the element with the index of 10 simply makes no sense because there is no element with the index of 10. Hence this error. Let's consider this computer program and let's look at the first line and that is the line that will produce the same list as the previous program in this video. Now here you can see I've got a segment of code. Now this segment of code will perform the same task as the 10 print statements performed in the last program we looked at. What we're doing here however we've got a while loop and every time we go through the while loop we execute these two statements. The first statement will print one of the elements of the list and this here will increment the variable i and I'll come back to show what that means in a moment. But let's just have a look at the syntax of this while loop. You see here we have the keyword while and we have this colon which is always there when we're using constructs in Python, the colon that is. Now here we have a conditional test. Now in this case this conditional test is asking the question is i less than 10? Well if you have a look here you can see I've set i equal to 0. So when we come to this position i is storing 0 so we're asking the question is i less than 10 which is the same as asking is 0 less than 10 because i stores 0 and the answer is yes it is so this is true now when this is true you go into the loop so these two lines of code will be executed of course once in the loop you can see here that i is being made equal to i plus 1 so i will go up by one value and when we come back to here now I will have the value of 1. So this is the question being asked, is 1 less than 10? And the answer is yes, so this is true. So you go back into the loop and these two lines of code are executed. Now, of course, every time we go round the loop, this will execute and at some point I will get to the value of 10. So when we then come to here and ask, is I less than 10? we'll be asking, is 10 less than 10? Well, it isn't. 10 is not less than 10, so this will be false, in which case we do not execute these two statements. We leave the loop and we carry on to this position to what would normally be the rest of the program. But here the program ends at this point. OK, I've just given an overview of this code and what it does and what the key parts of the code are. What I want to do now, however, is just to look at this line to remind ourselves what it will do. It will produce this here. And then, of course, what's going to happen, I'm going to initialize a value, an index value, which I'm representing by the name i with 0. And then this loop will print the content of each element of the list that you're looking at here in turn. So the output we will expect to see is shown here and you can see that that output is identical to the list that was created here. Now in a moment I'm going to do a trace of this program and show what happens when we go through the while loop. But before I do that I wish to compare the program you're looking at now with this one which we've seen already in this video. Have a look at this list and you can see it's the same as this one but down here you see to actually get the content of each of the elements printed on the screen I had to use 10 print statements whereas here I only had to use one print statement inside a loop. Now imagine if this list was a thousand items then I would require a thousand of these print statements whereas because I've used a while loop here I still only require the one and it would mean changing this value here from the 10 it currently is which is the length of the list to 1000 and I would then have a much more efficient piece of code without the need for me to type in a thousand print statements I would just use this one and while in the loop I would simply increment as shown by this program statement here. 
Now the reason we increment is because if you look here, you can see in the square brackets we have i. Now of course the first time we're in the loop, i is a zero, and that means it will be referring to this element position, because this is in effect list underscore a square brackets zero square brackets. And when we go round the loop again, of course, i will be one, which will point to this element. Then it will be two, which will point to this element, and so on. So we can see why we have this increment taking place. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change this program here slightly, and I'm going to do a trace through that program. Now this is almost the program we've just been looking at, and as I said, I've made a change. And the change is quite simple. If you look here, I now have a list with three elements. The reason I've reduced this to three, it was ten elements a moment ago, and that would drive me daft going round the loop explaining what happens ten times, because it's more or less the same every time you go through the loop. So here you can see we create a list with three elements, 23, 71, and 8. So this one is in index position 0, this one is in index position 1, and this one is in index position 2. So when this line of code executes, what we're going to get is a list, and I'm showing that list schematically here. And you can see it's got the name list underscore A, as you would expect, and this is the content. And you can see it's 23, 71, and 8. Here is the index of each of the elements from 0 through to 2. Now, if I go on to this line, I is assigned 0. Now, that's going to create a variable called I, and it's going to store 0 in it. We then come on to this line, and we're asking the question, is i less than 3? Well, i, we can see, has got the value 0 in. So what this is actually asking, is 0 less than 3? Well, the answer is, yes, it is. Consequently, this is true. And because it's true, we go into the loop. And when we get into the loop, we will execute these in turn. If I come to this one, then what this is going to do is print an element of the list. Which element? This element, the i position. Well, i, of course, has got zero. So what this is actually saying, it's going to print the element with the index of zero. So what's going to be printed to the screen is this element here, which is 23 which we can see was declared up here as 23 being the first element of the list. So if we look at the runtime, this line will actually output this 23 to the console, as you can see here. Now we come onto this line, and what it's going to do, it's going to take the value of i, which we can see is 0, and it's going to add to it 1, and 0 plus 1 is 1, and that 1 is assigned to i. So if you keep your eye on i here, you'll see it goes from 0 to 1. And then, of course, we're still in the loop, so we go back to here, and we ask the question, is i less than 3? Well, let's have a look at i. It's 1. So we're really asking here, is 1 less than 3? And the answer is, yes, it is. So it's true. So we go back into the loop to execute these in turn, but when we come to this one, this is printing list underscore a square brackets i, but i now, of course, is 1. So this is now referring to this index position, and the contents of this element is 71. So what will appear on the console, as you can see, is 71. Then, of course, we come to here, which is i equals i plus 1. So the i here will go up by 1, and it'll go to 2. We then come back to this position, and we ask the question, is i less than 3? We'll have a look. i is 2. So this is asking, is 2 less than 3? And the answer is yes, so it's true. So we go back into the loop, we execute this, and of course the i on this occasion now has the value of 2, which is referring to this element position, because that's the index of 2. So we take a copy of the 8, and that is sent to the console, as you can see here. Now, of course, i is incremented by 1. So if you keep your eye on this i, you can see it goes up to 3. So now we come back to here, 
and we ask, is i less than 3? Well, have a look at the i, you can see it's 3. So this is really asking, is 3 less than 3? Well, it's not, is it? It's the same. So this is false, in which case you do not execute these because you do not go into the loop. You effectively go to here, which would normally be the rest of the program, but this is a short program, so there's nothing else to execute. And consequently, if you look at the console, you can see that the program ends. Of course, if I wanted to go back to my original list, I would simply extend the contents as shown here, where I've only got three values going into the list, so I've got a three-element list. And if I change that to ten elements here, I would change this number from three to ten. If I wanted a thousand elements, I'd obviously have to have the pain of typing a thousand in here, but I would simply put here one thousand and it would work in the same way and you would just simply keep on going round the loop until eventually you leave the loop. And if you've got 10 elements, you'll go through the loop 10 times and if you've got a thousand elements, you'll go through the loop a thousand times. Now at first sight, you may think that this computer program here is identical to the one we've just considered. However, it's not. If you look here, instead of having in this position less than, here you can see we have less than or equal to. So when this program executes, what's going to happen? This line of code is going to produce the list as you can see here. This is going to initialize i to zero. And when we come to this, it's going to say, is i less than or equal to three? Which is really asking, is zero less than or equal to three? three which is true and because it's true I come to here and I will print out list underscore a and of course I is zero so it will print this 23 to the screen and of course I now here will become one bigger so you can see it's one bigger here we come to here and obviously one is less than three it's not the same as three but it's less than three so it's true so we come to here and now we print out the 71 then this i becomes one bigger because that's what this is doing it's incrementing so we can see it changes to two and then we come back to this position is two less than or equal to three and the answer is less than so it's true so we go back here we execute the print so this eight is output to the screen and this i now becomes equal to i plus one so i becomes three as you can see here consequently we come to this position and we're asking, is i less than or equal to 3? Well, it's not less than 3, but it is equal to 3. Consequently, this is true. So we go back into here, and we're going to print list underscore a. And of course, i now has the value of 3. So when we attempt to print this, what's going to happen is this. We get an error. And of course, the error is shown here. And it's the same error that I introduced near the beginning of this video. Because what we've just attempted to do is to access the element of the list that has the index of 3. But of course, there is no index of 3. Look, it only goes from 0 to 2. Consequently, we get this list index out of range. Now, this is something that you will see frequently when you write programs using loops because you mistakenly choose the relational operator here incorrectly so you just have to be careful of that make sure you choose your relational operator here such that you never go list index out of range we have just observed that the while loop allows for navigation over a python list now this requires us to have a conditional test that is a relational operator and a variable that is incremented every time we go through the loop. Now I think it has been a useful exercise to have a look at how we can iterate across a Python list using the while loop because it allows us to emphasize the index nature of a Python list. What I would like to stress however, Python has better mechanisms to allow for navigating, that is iterating over a Python list. These mechanisms are covered later in this playlist. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.